Hello everyone, GTA V Lab here, and today that's gonna be a bit different video, but uh, just pretty much informal. So, informational. I don't know what what word that is, but um, it's just gonna be how to make a Minecraft server on 1.10. Some people seem to be still sticking around 1.8, 1.9. Maybe that's because the, for 1.8, 1.9 because the combat updated 1.10 or the combat updated 1.9. I'm pretty sure. And stuff like that. So for the ones people that don't know how to um, make a Minecraft server for 1.10, I'm gonna be showing you how to do this with no host provider. You don't have to pay for this. It's home hosting. It there's a lot of factors that contribute to this. You have to have some good RAM, a lot of processing speed, and internet uh, speed uploads and download. But uh, let's just get right into it. So you know, open up um, any internet browser, any one of your choice. And you're going to t search why. Oops. Go get a new one here. Going on. Yives mirror. Yives mirror. Who knows what that's called? And then press enter, and it will search for this. And you're going not to select the first one, but the second one that says spigot or spy guy. I love calling it spigot because of probably what it is. I mean, spigots are things. They're uh, whatever. Um. So download or direct download doesn't matter. Direct download just a faster, straight, more straightforward way. And you're gonna click on keep. Wanna ask if you wants to keep it there? You're gonna go back here. You're gonna drag the file onto the desktop. Just drag it on there. Nothing else. You can close the internet browser. You can keep it open. You can have all the all the you can have as many tabs or programs running as much as you want um, while you're doing this. I just don't heavily recommend it. As you are, um, as you're gonna need a lot of processing power to run a server, or just depending on what you're trying to run. So you're gonna go over to the actual drive file. We're gonna right-click on it, and you'll see all these options. You're gonna go down to rename, and then type in spigot. And that's it, just spigot. So it should be a jar file, the spigot, and all these other files that might be on your desktop if you prefer your desktop to be that way. I prefer it nice and clean with nothing on it but my stuff in the taskbar. Next you're going to go down to your um, notepad, um, go down to Windows search and then type in notepad. You can use notepad plus plus or you can even do word pad. You can do word pad, notepad, notepad plus plus but I'm just going to go with notepad since I pref much prefer it. Now you're going to see something where you can type in a whole bunch of stuff just freely. So here's what you're going to type in. Every line that I type, there's only going to be four lines. And it, I'll explain what every last word of it means. So first you're going to type in no caps, title, and then you have to get a capital S E R E V R. You can, so what this does is the title command renames um, what is on top of the file so it looks much more professional and more easy to remember. So like for example, if you open up a command prompt here, you can see at the top where it says command prompt very clearly. So if you do title this, like title server for this example, it'll rename it to oops, server. And that's just that, just make it look better. I'm gonna close that. Alright, so title server, that's nothing, not, not much at all. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, I just really prefer it. Then you press enter. You can type in color space A. And what this is going to do is it's going to change the color that is original back, black background and then um, light green text to, or no, back background to white text into back black background with green text. So again, for the command prompt example, do color A here and I still have the black background with the color A which is green text there's color 2 there's that color that's just the darker shade of green normally used for like technology companies I'll keep it A because it's just a brighter color but there's all these other colors like if you just do like P it'll just give you a, like a list um, yeah, there's there's black, blue, green, aqua, red, purple, yellow, white, gray, light blue, light green, light aqua, light red, light purple, light yellow. Well, I wonder what um what color for what color? Let's see, it's interesting. Yeah, you, but it looks real cool. You can use any color you wish. 
Um, but I think that's really cool. So you can use any of this 0 to 10 and then A to F, I think that was. I didn't check. So you can use anything. You don't even have to include these two lines if you don't want to. Now to get into the real explanation, the most important line of all. Without this line, it could not run at all. This is, and I'll explain to you why we're doing this too. Like then, I'm going to type it all in, then I'll go over explaining it. Alright, so what this line right here does is it says java-xmx1024m, so we're just going to um, debunk that first. So what may catch your eye for something that you may know if you're at least a little bit tech savvy is the 1024m or 1024 megabytes um, bit right there. So that's saying, okay, so we want to apply one gigabyte max to this server. And then you see the same thing here, except it says XMS instead of XMX. And that means the minimum amount. So XMS 1024M means that it wants to give a minimum of one gigabyte. So it's just a max and a minimum of one gigabyte. So it's not going to really use, like, Oh, we have a whole gigabyte of RAM, or we're not going to use half of it, because that's what main, mainly host providers do to save RAM power for their servers that they have li quite literal servers in their host buildings and all that. So the dash jar, bigger that jar, dash o oh, true, is dash jar meaning okay. So we're going to look for a jar file to execute with one gigabyte of RAM, and it, after that, it's bigger that jar because we want to execute the spigot file that is on our desktop. Then we're gonna do, oh, d by the way, if you have um, double clicked this jar file, it's probably not good. So you either uh, wanna restart your PC just to not, um, just to get rid of the process, or you can go in the task manager and act, like just end all the Java, Java processes, but yeah, don't, don't, don't click it, that can be a pain. So um, then dash o true means, to turn the server online so that people outside your wider er, local area network your land can join after port forwarding which I'll go through in the next um, episode I'll make this a series so sweet that jar oh true then the final line is pause that's saying that if like it says press any key to continue or if you do slash like when you do slash stop it'll stop like stop loading all the plugins and stop it all and then it's like press any key to continue if you have pause. If you don't have pause, it'll just t t close the command prompt when it's done closing everything. So now you're going to go to file, save as, oops, actually, we're going to minimize this. Go make a new file on the desktop and name it capital S E R E V R, just the server. Then you're going to drag this big file into the server file. And I'll, since I like to keep things organized, I'm just going to move the server file up a little bit. doesn't matter. Now, we're going to go to the notepad where we just type this command prompt batch file here. And we're going to go to file, save as. And we're going to go to desktop. Double click into server. Go down to where it says save as type down here. And then click all files. It should show the spigot file if you've done this right. And then you're going to type in run.bat. If it's just run, it'll save it as a text file. So you've got to use .bat. You press save, then you can close this. Now you're gonna double click into server, and there should be two files here just run and spigot. This one should have a different um, icon here than spigot does because it is a different type of file, a batch file, which is a command prompt file pretty much. So you're gonna double click run, and if everything goes smoothly, um, it should say loading libraries, comma, please wait. And Depending on your system speed, it should load fairly fast the very first time, especially since it's just EULA that you have to accept. So it should generate three more files named logs, EULA, and server. So don't click into server or logs yet. Right now, we're going to double click into EULA, and it should be an automatically typed file here that says, By changing the setting below to true, you are indicating your agreement to our EULA then a link to the Minecraft EULA that you should not read because it's just stupid. No one follows the EULA anymore. And anyone who does, it's probably not going to be a successful server, but that's what they're trying to run. But um, no one, just don't don't even worry about it. And then it says, 
I don't even know what that's for. But the real thing you're supposed to do here, just type go back for where it says false, just um, make that go away, backspace it, delete it, and then type in true. No spaces, not like that, because that won't break it. And you just have to go equals, E-U-L-A equals true. And then just save it. And then go back into the server file and double click run, and it should open up the command prompt again saying loading libraries, please wait. And then it should load all the world, all the world files, like where it says preparing spawn area, that's where you're supposed to be spawning. Again, depending on your system speed, it may take a bit. With me, I have a very fast PC going on here, so um, it's it should be it's good. Alright, so then it should say this right here done 27 seconds for me but um after that you should just be off see all this stuff it's not really important at all so then you're gonna type in not slash stop but just stop and just say saving chunks and because of the pause command it says press any key to continue so like you can scroll up and just see all this stuff still without just exiting you can press any key to just exit then it should generate all these files there should be about 19 files in there and this is what is your minecraft server so I'm gonna t just go into minecraft and show you how to um, connect to it and then I'm gonna end the episode there so you're gonna run the server of course and you're going to launch minecraft the application and next episode we'll be showing you how to install um, now that'll be later later the next episode will be how to uh, get people outside your local area network to join your server using an IP address and it'll be a so it'll say done here six seconds then you're gonna play the Minecraft sorry about this rustling sound I'm wearing some that those pants that make this sound I hate them they're, they're, they're so bad um, so just load Minecraft for a bit, multiplayer. This is, uh, that's, that's my server that we're working on. We've been working on this for a long time, but you're going to go to add a new server, or you can do direct connect, either one, but, um, I'm going to type in local host, and that's it, just local host. It seems real weird, but, um, just local host, not localhost.com, not localhost. You can do equals two five five six five. That'll work also, but um, you can just type in for now localhost to keep things simple. Refresh. It's still here, so you can join it. Logging in. Shouldn't take long at all. Might be a bit laggy at first, because it's first time loading. But yeah, yeah, that's how you join it. There's some weird FPS going on here. Server and my host has never, ever been this laggy. Probably because I'm running Bandicam. But, oh my god, this is awful. I'm going to get out of here. But, um, yeah, that's how you connect to your server. But I'm going to end this episode there. Um, if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what I should do next for all playlists, uh, if you, god, I hate outros, if you, uh, like this video, like, subscribe, I already said the comic thing, and of course, I, I, god, I despise outros.